Terps. Yeah, I'm back. What's up? Jank uh, here with uh, John Iderola. Uh, John's losing his voice a little bit. A little uh, bit. A little bit. Yeah. And but he's going to brave through uh, the show here, and uh, we're going to give you a lot of great stories. Uh, first hour chock full of great stories. Same is true of the second hour. I love being back. Uh, New York was super stressful, so I'm in a kind of a cranky mood. But that's not a bad <laughs> thing for you guys. Because that means that uh, I could lose it, which could be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that left turn story, I expect Jenk to probably possibly lose it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the left <laughs> turn story. That's good. Hey, you know what? Hey, Seuss, uh, fire up Django on chain just in case. I mean, get, get that ready. <laughs> get that ready. That's what I'm just saying. Okay, it could go at any time. If oh. you see his face red and press the button. Okay. All right, so, John, take it away. Okay, let's jump right in there. <clears throat> Relations between the U.S. and Israel have apparently taken a turn for the worse thanks to an anonymous source criticizing uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, there's a number of amazing derogatory quotes about the Prime Minister. The first that's making all the headlines, though, is the thing about Bibi is he's a chicken shit. Damn. Those are fighting words, as we say. So he's a chicken shit, but they have a lot of other insults that this anonymous State Department official levied against the Prime Minister. He was described as recalcitrant, myopic, reactionary, obtuse, blustering, pompous, and Aspergery, which I'm not sure is a real word. Oh, that's phenomenal. That's yeah. my new favorite word. Aspergery. <laughs> I know a couple of guys who are Aspergery. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Although that's uh, probably offensive and yada yada. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> okay. So, of course, the world is exploding. Yeah. Uh, how dare you criticize uh, the true leader of this country? Uh, so. Uh, Everybody at the White House, everybody involved in the government must immediately bow their heads and do full-throated apologies. Now, mm -hmm. of course, the same guys who uh, tell Obama that he's not tough enough on every other foreign leader. Oh, he should punch Putin in the nose. Uh, he should go after not just our enemies, but also our allies. He's not tough enough on Hamid Karzai. He wasn't tough enough of, on Mal Maliki. These are top allies in Afghanistan and Iraq, right? But yeah. forget those guys. Uh, the French are always pushing us around. And the Germans, <laughs> why don't we regulate on the Germans? These guys push us around, let alone what China does. Mm -hmm. We should punch every foreign leader in the face. Close your eyes, punch. Right. Except one. Except one. Yeah. The almighty Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. And how dare one yeah. anonymous official somewhere in the building yeah. say something bad about uh, Netanyahu, which, by the way, is massively warranted. So mm -hmm. here we'll tell you on this show what the rest of the media uh, will not tell you. In fact, they'll do the exact opposite. They'll yell at Obama for uh, saying something that is obvious. Of course, yeah. of course Netanyahu doesn't want a peace deal. Now... There is some. There are two things that are wrong about the quotes. I'll get into that as well. But let's that, that tell you more. Agree? No, no. Well, maybe. So let, let's do, give yeah. you more details, and I'll tell you what's wrong. Here are some more of the quotes. Uh, by the way, these were given to Jeffrey Goldberg of the Atlantic. They're the ones who broke the story. Another manifestation of his chicken shittedness, which is a nice turn of phrase, in the view of Obama administration officials, is his near pathological desire for career preservation and clear signals by Netanyahu to his political base in advance of possible elections next year that he is still with them, despite his rhetorical commitment to a two-state solution. The public criticism of Obama policies is simultaneously heartfelt and also designed to mobilize the base. So what Netanyahu was saying publicly about being committed to this two-state solution, he's just saying that to, to get support while, while uh, internationally, while domestically behind the scenes, he's making clear to the Israeli people that he is not. So here's problem number one, right? So they're not wrong about any of that, mm -hmm. but it misses a critical point, which is that Netanyahu doesn't actually want peace. He doesn't desire yeah. it. It's not just for political uh, <coughs> shenanigans in, in, in his own government. Yes, it's true. He is appealing to his base. That's yeah. right. He is pretending to be in favor of peace for international reasons. Yes, that's right. But the, the core of it is he doesn't want it. Yeah. It's not that he's scared. That's why the chicken shit quote is actually kind of wrong. Mm. It's not like Netanyahu is like, oh, I'm so afraid of peace. Yeah. No, no. He's like, he thinks, and perhaps rationally so, given that we back him 100%, I have all the power. The Palestinians have none of the power. Yeah. I will continue to take more and more of their land, and at the end of however my, long my terms are, I will have annexed more of their land, more for me, less for them. Yeah. I win, they lose. I don't want peace. I want their land. Yeah. And, and I want their resources. And domestically, probably not a bad legacy. Internationally, mm -hmm. and perhaps in the view of uh, future generations, probably not as good of a legacy. 
Um, and before we continue, we do have some more negative comments. Uh, one important note that for some reason I don't see in any of the many articles all over the internet. So this is an anonymous uh, State Department official. When uh, a president comes into office, they don't fire everyone at the State Department. We have, no, we have no proof that this guy was even put there by Obama. He might well be a holdover from Bush. After all, this is hardly doing Obama favors, and yet this guy keeps saying this stuff anonymously over and over. They're acting as if this guy is distantly related to Obama. We have no idea. He could be a, he could be a Republican, for all we know. Okay, now, John makes a terrific point there because... The Obama administration, of course, is saying that they're furious about uh, mm. this leak and what was said in the leak and that Netanyahu was offended, et cetera. Now, it's both true and untrue, okay? Mm. I, I think that it probably does somewhat reflect the position of the administration because yeah. we know for a fact that they are enormously frustrated with Netanyahu. Netanyahu just uh, said that they're going to expand the settlements by another thousand Home. So here we go again. It's basically saying, I have no interest in peace. It's not basically saying it, it's yeah. exactly saying it. I'm not going to do peace. I'm going to take your land and I'm going to take more of it, right? Yeah. So they are frustrated. Okay. But the reason John's point is really good is because, remember, why in the world would the Obama administration want news like this coming out right before an election? Like five days before Five days election. before an incredibly important election in the U.S. Yeah. So, but there are many people in the State Department, some of whom agree with Obama, some of whom don't, who could easily put out a story like this and go, oh, I'm in the State Whoops. Department, I'm an official, yeah. did I leak that? Oh, golly gee. Now all the Democrats, uh, you'll all have to you know, do what you have to do to you'll say you hate Obama, you're with Israel, and you're going to have to do all that, yep. and it causes massive problems for the Democrats. Yeah, it, it is right now, of course, uh, Netanyahu is going to respond to this. Uh, we have video of him responding specifically to the chicken shit comment, actually, which is pretty funny. אני עומד על ביטחון ישראל, אכפת לי מחיי כל אזרח ואזרח וחיי כל חייל וחייל. צריך להבין, האינטרסים העליונים שלנו וראשם הביטחון ואחדות ירושלים אינם עומדים בראש מעייניהם של אותם גורמים אנונימיים שתוקפים אותנו ואותי אישית. כי המתקפה עליי באה רק בגלל שאני מגן על מדינת ישראל. אני אמשיך להגן על אזרחי ישראל. ואני מבקש גם להוסיף, אני מכבד ומוקיר את הקשר העמוק שלנו עם ארצות הברית. As the subtitles explain there, he says, I, I'm doing it for the security of Israel, I'm doing it to defend Israel, I'm doing it overall for Israel. So of course he's going to have to mention security while he respects the ties with the U.S. Yada. But in essence there, he's saying why he's doing it. He's like, I, did I stutter? I, I don't care about the Palestinians. Yeah. I, I never once mentioned the Palestinians. I never once said I uh, am going to do anything for them. I'm not going to agree to any concessions for them. All I care about is Israel. Yeah. And so, you know, Sam Harris loves to say, just take people at their word. When Palestinians say they're going to kill Jews, you, should, you have to take them at their word. Yeah. When Netanyahu says, all I care about is Israel, I'm continue to expand settlements and continue to not uh, do real uh, peace negotiations because all I care about is Israel. Yeah. Then take him out his word. Yeah. That's exactly right. When Back in the, the, when we had a more significant occupation force in both Iraq and Afghanistan, at least Bush would pretend that he cares about those people, that he cares about their security, he cares about their access to the, the, you know, the democratic institution, institutions of state. I mean, he didn't even mention it there in that address. Um, and, and of course, does it actually help Israel? No. We're under the uh, belief, because it is true, that if you did a peace deal, that it would be far, far better for the security of Israel in the long run. What are you going to do? Just occupy them forever? forever. And you think that's not going to blow up? You think that that's, they're just going to learn to accept that they are conquered? Yeah. And they will bow their heads for the rest? That, that's not what's going to happen. That's not what's happened in the past. It's not good for the security of Israel. But he thinks, well... You know, but right now we have all the weapons, mm -hmm. and if they ever fight back, we call them terrorists, right? And but if we bomb them and kill seventy-five percent civilians, we say they made us do it. Yeah. I, so I, for the, what is to the benefit of Israel in the short run, according to the right winger Netanyahu? I right. take more land. Exactly. And yeah, after earlier promising during the beginning of the Obama administration that he wouldn't, he has continued to throughout. Um, now, while he is doing some damage control, I'm sure that he's doing okay. The Obama administration is also in damage control mode. Uh, Josh Ernest uh, held a press conference. For a 
we're really excited to show to you. Uh, and so we're going to jump to that right now. Uh, Josh Ernest answering questions about these anonymous attacks on Netanyahu. Is it appropriate for a senior administration official to refer to the Israeli Prime Minister as chicken dot 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 dot? And does that description represent the view of the administration at large up to and including the president? Uh, the fact is that comments like that do not reflect the administration's view. Uh, and we do believe that they are counterproductive. Okay. Now, he, again, I think he's only half right, right? I yeah. think that they probably do somewhat reflect the view of the administration, uh, but he's right that they are totally counterproductive. Yeah. So it doesn't really, like, they might be productive if you had Netanyahu at a point where he could or could not negotiate, and mm -hmm. you want to push him a little bit and prod him in public by yeah. saying, oh, you're not man enough to negotiate. But we're not doing that. But we're not in the middle of that yeah. now, so it's just useless. And what we are in the middle of is U.S. elections. Yeah. So it is massively counterproductive because now all the Democrats will have to turn around and agree with the Republicans that we should never pressure Israel. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Right before an election, yeah. what are they all going to say? You say, okay, no, 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 no. Don't ever pressure Israel. Yeah. <laughs> Netanyahu is always right. I, I, don't, I didn't hear what he said. I don't care what he said. He's always right. Yeah, right? I couldn't understand it was in Hebrew. So that is totally counterproductive to the peace process. And then a senior uh, Obama administration, same guy that said the chicken shit line, also added why else Netanyahu uh, is uh, afraid. And so it gives you a sense that this guy, to John's point, I'm not sure this guy's at all a Democrat or a progressive. And uh, th this half of the quote makes no sense. He says, quote, the good thing about Netanyahu is that he's scared to launch wars. The bad thing about him is that he won't do anything to reach an accommodation with the Palestinians or with the Sunni Arab states. The only thing he's interested in is protecting himself from political defeat. He's got no guts. That doesn't, what, what do you mean he's afraid to launch wars? He just launched the war. So, and yeah. if you're trying to go to him, what do you want him to do? You want him to launch a war against Iran? Are you mental? Yeah. Like, what kind of person says that? So, there's something really fishy about yeah. this leak. Yeah, and by the way, like, I, I know that people are going to say, oh my God, they didn't launch a war, they just protected themselves. And yet, the, at least the academic definition of a war is 1,000 plus battle deaths, which we had in Gaza during that conflict. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's incredibly frustrating. It's incredibly frustrating that, that Josh Ernest even had to answer for that. That woman seriously asked him while bleeping out shit, even though we're all adults. Um, can you respond to the anonymous person who works at an agency with ten, tens of thousands of people working for it? Like, it, it, it's not fucking Joe Biden. It's not a Democratic senator. It has nothing to do with Josh Ernest. It has nothing to do with Obama. We have no idea if there's any connection to Obama. To bring that up is just ridiculous. I, I, okay, next time, if, uh, if Ted Cruz becomes president or something like that, I want to have one or two people in the State Department every month leaking something ridiculous and having it, to have him respond to it every single week in a press conference. What kind of way is that to run the government? All right, so then the next Ed Henry clip is perfectly representative because the entire press is roaring in unison saying to Obama, how dare you not kiss Netanyahu's ass? How, it's not which even you. Which we do constantly. Yeah, it, which, which first of all, we gave him Iron Dome, okay? I mean, and even Netanyahu said it's the greatest gift that's been given to Israel, right? Yeah. And Obama did that. Bush didn't do it. Obama did it, right? But nonetheless, you haven't uh, bowed down enough in front of another leader, which, I, again, I thought he was yeah. not supposed to do exactly. based on any, every other that's leader. That's the apology to right. what I thought. But Henry takes it so far that he says, even though he's a member of the press, you should do an investigative yeah. press leak to find out the enemies of the state, not our state, yeah. the enemies in his proceedings mind in the mind of the of entire power state. of the Israeli state who said something against Israel yeah. we must do a witch hunt yeah. find him and burn him at the stake watch this the administration also has a long track record uh, over the many months about complaining about leaks involving national security um, we've seen threats to reporters like James Risen to potentially be thrown in jail over leaks to him James Rosen's phone records gone through because of leaks to him my question going back to the Israel story is, why then are you kind of sloughing off this idea that you kind of don't care who leaked that story? That might have, in, that not might have, that insulted the Prime Minister of Israel. You, you've gone after reporters again and again in this administration to find out who leaked information to them. And then when it comes to insulting the Prime Minister, you don't seem to care who leaked it. Well, and I, again, I don't think that is an accurate 
a reflection of the administration's policy, and it certainly isn't an accurate reflection uh, of our views of the Prime Minister of Israel. Has the department gone after a whole series of reporters? No, they haven't. And in fact, they've actually put in place measures under the leadership of the Attorney General to ensure uh, that journalists in this country are able to do their jobs. As a reporter, I certainly don't believe in leak investigations, but for you to suggest that this administration has not launched more leak investigations to, to get at information, who leaked what, gone after reporters, and now, in this case, doesn't seem to matter. Well, it seems like you're in a position where you're advocating a, a leak investigation be conducted here. I'm curious as to why I you think don't want to know who leaked this. Uh, how how dare ridiculous. you? How dare you? Now, look, he's right about one thing. Yes, Obama's broken records on leak investigations. And no, they don't want to find out who it is because it would be embarrassing. No, 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 no he's even wrong about that. Uh -huh. Even if you even if you use that as an excuse to launch another investigation, in those cases, it was about supposedly things being leaked that damage national security, not an insult to a foreign leader. It's about actual military or defense information being leaked. It's not about somebody calling someone a name. Right now, of course, that's their claims. The reality is, uh, the people who leaked that information in earlier cases embarrass the government, which yeah. is the most unacceptable thing you would do. Right, and so. No, but in this case, Ed Henry from Fox <coughs> News is saying, the great almighty Netanyahu has been insulted. You saw, has, he's been insulted. How, how could the entire United States government not stop on a dime and investigate who has insulted our dear leader Netanyahu? How dare you? Yeah. Get in line, okay? And don't you ever make that mistake again. Look, again, this government is... To their credit, I know that they, they are being as tough with Israel as is politically <laughs> possible given the insane state of American politics, yeah. right? But if we had a government that actually represented the people and, and cared to do the right uh, foreign policy, they'd say, hey, listen, oh, Netanyahu is not coming to the peace table. In fact, he's pushing us further away from the peace table. Yeah. So you put any adjective you like on it, right? Yeah. But it is counterproductive. Now, you want to call that uh, for his own self-interest? You want to say it's for the right-winger's self-interest in Israel? You want to say that it's cowardly? You say anything you like, okay? That's your yeah. job, not my job. But I'm telling you, I don't like that he's doing that. Yeah. Okay, so if, if he feels insulted, go ask him how he feels about exactly. that. Exactly. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, and so I, I think that uh, one of two things is happening. Either one, Ed Henry just wants to use this as an opportunity to make clear how much he personally supports the state of Israel, mm -hmm. because that came off as beyond fawning. Or it's pathetic because he's supposed to, like if, if he's against these investigations into the leaks, he should be consistent. This could be an opportunity to do that, but he's not choosing to do that. He's saying, look, I don't believe in leaks, but you should, or leak investigations, but you should look into them. It's like a submissive saying, mistress, I don't get off on being choked, but could you put your hands around my throat and start squeezing? You're encouraging the administration to continue a policy that supposedly you don't support, which is ridiculous. Um, one other ridiculous thing, by the way. Other than uh, your analogy, right? Perhaps. <laughs> um, so, I mean, we're going to let that slide with the mistress <laughs> I thing? I think that's that was, a good analogy. Well, that was fun, but okay. Um, right. Geraldo got involved. He tweeted this. If Israeli uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu does not stop uh, West Bank settlement expansion, then White House critic is right. He is chicken shit. So now you got to remember, Geraldo uh, is, is a big supporter of Israel. Uh, he happens to also be uh, half Jewish. Yeah. And so he's not coming at this from a point of view of being against Israel. Like us, he's coming at it from a point of view of this is not helpful to Israel. Yeah. You, you can't do this indefinitely and not expect really bad things to happen. Yeah. So let's get to two-state solution already. Yeah. Uh, one quick final point. Can we put that tweet up for one more second? I like that Geraldo is using for Twitter a profile picture that was taken of him in the early 90s. <laughs> it doesn't look anything like that anymore. Well, that's, that's a good point. <laughs> also, how did he go through his whole career with that ridiculous <laughs> mustache? That shows, I think, some intestinal fortitude. That's true. Yeah. He, he stuck with it, man. He stuck with it. He, he made started it in the, Yeah, he started in the 70s, and he's like, no, I'm going to stay right yeah. here. It's okay. him, and, him and Steve Harvey. They're holding it down. <laughs> holding down the fort, man. Yeah. All right, well, uh, he's got intestinal <coughs> fortitude in a couple of different ways. So credit. Yeah. I, I like that our country has evolved to a point where Geraldo <laughs> Rivera is the voice of reason. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Okay, uh, let's jump to another story. 
Uh, the foreign policy attacks against President Obama continue, uh, this time with John Boehner on the campaign trail. He's bringing up the specter of Vladimir Putin's recent attacks against Ukraine and Crimea. Let's watch. Five years ago, when the President of the United States went to Europe and he went to the Middle East on what I'll call his apology tour. Apologizing for America being strong and apologizing uh, for America leading. And the manifestation of that apology tour is what we see uh, in the chaos going around the world today. Listen, I talk to world leaders every week. They want America to lead. They're begging America to lead. Because when America leads and America is strong, the world is a safer place. And uh, when you look at this chaos that's going on, does anybody think that Vladimir Putin would have gone into Crimea? Had George W. Bush been a president of the United States? Oh, even Putin's smart enough to know that Bush would have punched him in the nose in about 10 seconds. <laughs> That is unbelievably stupid, and they all laughed. Yeah. No one in that room has any idea of what happens in the news or current events. Yeah. So let's review the record. So number one, if Putin had gone into anywhere that we were allies with, well, Bush, yeah, if only he had. Oh my. Oh, it turns out, well, golly gee, he did. In fact, uh, during 2008, when Bush was in office, uh, he went into Georgia, the territories of Abkhazia and South Ossetia, right? Yeah. And what did Bush do? Wait, I think I have it on record here. <laughs> that struck me as we were watching that video, and I was trying to remember the exact year. That's an amazing point. He did the exact same thing. Putin did it on Bush's watch, and Bush was like, huh, wait, <laughs> wait, look at that. And yeah. you know what he did? He punched himself in the nose. Oh, okay. he, he went back to clearing brush. <laughs> yeah, he had a lot of brush to clear, that's yeah. true. Now, let's show you what uh, Bush... <laughs> Literally. Um, let's show you what Bush uh, did uh, and mm. said about Putin in reality. This was Bush during uh, his administration. Vladimir Putin, you, when you first met him, you said you, you got a sense of his soul. Uh, but you I looked later, in his eyes and saw his soul. And later you, you, you told him he was cold-blooded. Yeah, I did. And did you read him wrong? Did he change? What, what can you tell us well, about first, Vladimir Putin? Well, first, let me tell Putin? you the story. Uh, we're, Condi and I are in a room in Slovenia. <laughs> in Slovenia. <laughs> Is there any funnier person on the planet? I mean, he just, the way he says a word can put the whole room into a lap. You know what? All those billboards, uh, like along highways, that say, Miss Me Yet? I, I do miss you, buddy. Yeah. Now, so they're, of course, asking him about a quote that he said during his administration that he looked mm -hmm. into his eyes and saw his soul and he said that he was a good guy. And so here he's like, Yeah, I did it. Uh, <laughs> I did it. But, but it was in Slovenia. Okay, well, tell us more, Bush. <laughs> So when I was asked a question, and the conversation went on from there, but when I was asked a question, um, do you trust Vladimir Putin in front of a huge press conference after our meeting, uh, my answer was yes. And so I said, <laughs> yes. And the reporter said, why? And I said, because I looked into his eyes and I saw his soul. Has anyone ever been more wrong? I mean, think <laughs> about that. Think about how... Imagine if Obama had said that he stared into Putin's eyes oh my God. and saw his soul and that his soul was good. Yeah. Fox. The yeah. I mean, yeah. Oberyn would look healthy by comparison. <laughs> okay. That's a spoiler. Okay. <laughs> Fox News would look. How could he say that? Not, Not even uh, Putin, if it's any leader. Any using leader. Using that terminology. It, well, except Netanyahu. If he said well, he yeah. looked in Netanyahu's eyes and fell in love, <laughs> they'd be like, oh, all right, finally, making sense. Yeah. Okay. Now, but for Bush to look into Putin's eyes and see a good soul, the guy's former KGB. The guy, I mean, <laughs> we, we knew what Putin was. It's not like we just found out about Putin. Yeah. You couldn't have looked into somebody's eyes and seen a, a worse soul. I mean, look, yeah. that's not fair. There's worse souls in the world. And that quote's but, after the invasion. But my point is that what a fool. Yeah. Right? He looks at a KGB operative who then goes on to invade many countries, yada, yada, and do, do unbelievable yeah. things. And he thinks, oh, this guy's, he's innocent. Yeah. He's a good guy. He's an innocent uh, guy. Good look. Good. Yeah. Oh, on, so on, stupid. On soulless eyes alone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and look, I know we're going to go to more of the, the Putin love and everything, but not only did Bush do nothing during this time, and Boehner's looking back on it, you know, through rose colored glasses, not only did he do nothing, but Boehner specifically said, when America leads, America is strong. Bush had his chance to lead us. He led us into Afghanistan and Iraq. It led to well, 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 well over a trillion dollars lost. 
thousands of American dead. And also, by the way, as a small little uh, side note, the creation of ISIS, thanks to the instability that he brought about in Iraq. He led America is not stronger as a result. And actually, I was going, I was going to go back to Boehner's point. In the middle of his little you know, campaign promise, he points out, hey, you know, I talk to world leaders, and they can't wait for America to tell us what to do. What countries are you talking to that say, whenever America does something, I'm waiting to follow because they're my yeah. God. Talk about a, a God complex that makes people, that illustrates why people are tired of the way our leaders, at least, are acting that we really yeah. are. Yeah. So <laughs> now uh, we know, though, that the Republicans uh, are all very tough on Putin. Obama's to soft on Putin. Face. Right? But uh, Republicans would just would manhandle him. Yeah. So let's take a look at uh, conservatives and Republicans. Uh, very recently on yeah. television uh, and how they actually reacted to Putin. Vladimir Putin is playing Game of Thrones and we're playing Downton Abbey. I think Putin is playing uh, chess and I think we're playing marbles. And I don't think it's even close. Didn't they have a picture of like Putin with his shirt off yeah. on, on horseback? And then they have a picture of Obama with his on his bicycle with his that goofy helmet of his. Obviously the Russian leader sees himself as a macho man who's going to do pretty much what he wants. The president sees himself as a renaissance man who wants to accommodate. There's even something better. When the last G8 summit took place in Dublin a year ago, President Putin and President Obama both went, and they both wanted to use the same gym at the same time. Mm -hmm. They couldn't share. So it was who got to use the gym. Well, President Obama got to use the gym. Putin, not to be outdone, said, fine, if you guys don't want me in the gym, I'm going to go dive in the icy lake in Dublin. I'm going to do the breaststroke across the lake, and I'm going to one-up you. So what happened? In all the newspapers in Dublin and all the newspapers in Great Britain, in Ireland, there were pictures of Putin shirtless doing the breaststroke, muscles bulging. And then there was the companion picture of President Obama in the gym shirt shooting hoops. I mean, it's embarrassing. Look it. People are looking at Putin as one who wrestles bears and drills for oil. They look at our president as one who wears mom jeans. So, uh, no, John, they would have punched him in the face right after they blew him. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I was going to go with hand job, but yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, I mean, oh, the way he stroked my breast with his bulge. <laughs> oh, God, he, oh, what a man Putin yeah. is. Oh, I would have looked into his eyes and kept on looking as he took me all night long. <laughs> you see how tough we would have been on Putin? Yeah. <laughs> I love, like, if you wear a helmet as you ride a bike, you're an idiot. And yeah. also, by the way, to be a renaissance man, all you have to do is ride a bicycle, apparently. But what I love is they are so childish. Their standard is, as president, if a foreign leader does something, you better at least match him. If he jumps off a bridge, you got to jump off even farther or something like that. So yeah. he went in the fucking lake. He's a moron and a crazy person. It doesn't mean the president should do the same thing. No, no. I, I, if, I, if he went in the icy lake, I would have pulled a David Blaine and I would have buried myself in ice. <laughs> exactly. Or and, drowned myself. Right. And then I would be dead, but it's okay. But I would have showed him. Tough man. Yeah, I'm not a fucking Renaissance man. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Yeah. And okay. President Obama, buy some fucking skinny jeans, please. Okay. And then uh, we have one more. I, I just Kimberly okay. Guilfoyle uh, also wanted to uh, show her appreciation of Putin. Can I just make a special request in the magic lamp? Can we get like Netanyahu or like Putin in for 48 hours? Uh, you know, head of the United States. I don't know. I just want somebody to get in here and get it done right, so that Americans don't have to worry and wake up in the morning f fearful. Yeah. So conservatives would have punched Putin in the mouth, uh, except for the fact they would rather have him as the leader of the yeah. United States than Obama. They would give control of the government to Vladimir Putin. And by the way, like I love, um, just bring in Netanyahu. That way they don't have to live in fear. Although if you listen to Netanyahu, every Israeli citizen lives in fear every single day of the people attacking them from Gaza that he apparently has been unable to root out after years and years and years of invasions. The so Kimberly Guilfoyle should rethink that. Okay, I love the Tom turvy world in which so-called conservatives turn around and say, we should hand the government over to the Russian leader. Yeah, yeah. We need a little bit of red in the White House. <laughs> it's ridiculous. All right. Uh, let's take a quick break here. Uh, we have a lot more uh, stories for you. John Arrest's voice. We'll be right back. Anna, baby, help me. Help me build a website. Dude, you're an adult man. I don't remember what I was supposed to say. <laughs> I already forgot what I said before that. <laughs> God damn it. Guys, I have an awesome idea for a new website. Who wants to help me build it? Anybody? 
<laughs> Way to fuck it up, okay? I've lost my whole concentration. Jank <laughs> ah! ah! smash. We're trying to shoot a show. I'm the beaver! <laughs> Fresh! All right, you fuck me! Okay. Go away! It's beaver! <laughs> You've already got me to do this, I'm not doing anything else because you already told me to do this already, alright, just go. Anna baby, build me a website. I can't. <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> I looked at the camera, sorry. Are you kidding me? Do I look like a web designer? That was so insulting to web designers. <laughs> Do you, boo? I feel so cheesy saying that. Okay. Damn! Watch it. Hi. Back on the Young Turks. Uh, Hi. Jang and Anna with you guys. What's up, Anna? How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm getting a little sick, but I'm, uh, I'm fighting it. Jesus. Do you have I I um, You too? <clears throat> I you're all getting night Ebola? <laughs> Maybe, okay. I don't know, I didn't feel it until this afternoon. I have a sore throat and I'm getting the chills. Yep. Oh, so. yeah, 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 yeah. All right, stay away from me, all of you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jojo Joe says, just got tickets to Mad as Hell in uh, hashtag PDX. I have to confess, I don't know what that is. I think it's Portland. Could be. Mm -hmm. I assume. I assume Portland yeah. too, but I don't know. Uh, can't wait to see the Young Turk story on the big screen. Good times. Hashtag TYT Live. Jojo Joe, you're totally right, right, right. Uh, Tom Zawaki says, what's the difference between a politician and a prostitute? Politicians help corporations, prostitutes help people. Mm. That's a fair difference. Uh, no more donations says, I looked into Chris Christie's eyes and I saw Dunkin' Donuts. All of them. Okay, fun. Um, and the members of the day are Peter Lindell, uh, member number 2738, and uh, Juliana a Anders, uh, so Juliana is member number 1688. Uh, why don't we talk a little bit about my New York trip uh, in the post game yeah. for the members, okay? So all the uh, fun, actually I, I had, did have some fun, I'll tell you about that too. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, here's a fun little tease for you guys. Last night I'm in a bathroom in, New in a restaurant in New York and a guy comes up to me because I'm crying. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, already bloop bloop bloop. And he says, are you alright dog? You were crying? I was crying. Okay. Are you gonna be all right? <gasps> what happened? Okay, wait. There's of course a twisty twist. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll explain in the post game for the members, uh, privileges of membership, uh, and everybody remember election night. We're all here. Uh, Anna, you're doing the referendum. Yes, I am. Okay, and uh, she's gonna be part of the coverage. John, Ben. Uh, all the Turks will be here. Election night extravaganza, November fourth, Tuesday, eight p.m. By the Don't way, don't forget the vote. Yes. One. Oh, it's on Tuesday. Yes. Damn it, I thought it was Wednesday. I know it's November 4th, but for some reason I thought November 4th fell on Wednesday. God damn it. Anna's been getting those flyers to go to the black community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you live? Oh no, she lives in a gay part of town, so they're probably sending those flyers to the uh, gay part of town too. Next week is going to be <laughs> insane. It's the midterm elections, my brother's getting married, which by the way, I got to remind you of that. That's on Friday, next Friday. Oh no, I know. Yeah, I know. Okay. Um, by the way, for members. You're all I invited. Also no, not. Oh. Stuck. All right, I want to tease. <laughs> I want to tease one thing. Uh, yesterday, Jimmy joined me for the post-game show because you weren't here, and the topic at hand was cuckolding. Oh, I love that topic. God <laughs> it damn it! So good. I'm so mi pissed. I missed a cuckolding discussion. <laughs> it was so good. Cuckolding is clearly uh, my favorite word <laughs> in the English language, although. Aspergery <laughs> is making a run for it, it's <laughs> which we found out about in the first hour. Okay, um, and yeah, and, and then on top of all that, we got the movie premiere yeah. next week too. So everything is next oh, shoot, week. Shoot, I forgot okay. about that. Okay. Right, November sixth on Thursday. MattisHealthFilm.com. Come join us in LA. Okay. All right. Next. All right. Verizon wants to offer you some tech news, so they are investing a considerable amount of money into a new online publication that they refer to as sugarstring.com. Now, if you want to know exactly what they want to offer you, their website says the following. A site that delivers the latest in technology and lifestyle news for a generation that doesn't separate tech from everyday living. Mm. From breaking news to thoughtful essays, best-in-class op-eds and beyond, this site covers what millennials really care about today. <laughs> Really? That's really fascinating because it turns out that there are two major things that this 
tech publication refuses to cover under any circumstance net neutrality and U.S. surveillance on American citizens. Wow. So th this is even more amazing because normally it's informal. Like, mm -hmm. they'll let it be known. Somebody writes an article about one of those things and they get moved into a closet and everybody knows, oh, be cool, be cool, We're, work at Verizon, don't write articles like that. In this case, when people were applying for jobs, they literally told them, you are not allowed to write those two articles, so don't come here if you think you're going to write yep. about net neutrality or spying that we were a part of. Yep. Amazing. So uh, let's go to graphic number 22. This is according to the Daily Dot, and they're very specific over at Verizon. The, in exchange for the major corporate backing, tech reporters at Sugar String are expressly forbidden from writing about American spying or net neutrality around the world, two of the biggest issues in tech and politics today. Now, what's fascinating is that this publication does write about government surveillance in other countries and is very, very critical of that. But since it's taking place in the United States, they've decided, no, nah, we're going to kind of avoid it, probably because Verizon was very much willing to hand over data regarding U.S. Uh, citizens to the government. Of course. So th this is a, a story that is emblematic of what's happening in the country on two very important issues. One is we have the state and, and business completely merging, right? So uh, of course, China is a competitor. It's a competitor f for nationally, kind of, for pride. They don't really care about that. It's also literally a competitor in a lot of these markets, right? Mm -hmm. So with China surveillance, can you believe they're doing that? Russia, et cetera, whatever it might be, right? Uh, but, but the business state merger has decided we can report about that. You can't report about our state problems. It's ridiculous. Because Verizon has the government's back, and that's even more important part than the competition is in this context. Um, Verizon has the government's back, and the government has Verizon's back. Because it's not like they're even two different entities at this point, Dave. That the top corporations fund the politicians. Mm -hmm. The politicians then turn around and uh, use those corporations in ways that benefit them in terms of national security, get to spy in on your enemies mm -hmm. and chase your enemies to all across the world. And by enemies, I don't mean terrorists. I mean enemies of the state like Edward Snowden and Manning and all those guys, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and everybody wins. And then your mergers, which turn you into even bigger monopolies, exactly. are allowed by the government. And, and everybody wins except us. Everyone wins except us. And also it really brings to question what the whole point of journalism is to begin with, right? Exactly. Journalism is supposed to be utilized to hold government officials or those in power accountable for their actions. But now it's being utilized as a propaganda tool for the wealthiest people and those in power. So it's great that they're being this transparent about it. But one thing that I found fascinating is that even though I look through as many websites as possible, I read as much news as possible, I didn't see this article. Mm -hmm. This is a fascinating article. It was covered in the Daily Dot, but it's not getting front page coverage right. in other publications. Now, the Daily Dot wrote about it because one of their reporters was approached by Verizon with these conditions, right? And he turned them down and he wrote about it. But normally that would get then be like, wow, isn't that a fascinating story? The yeah. rest of the media is like, and I think the I reason why is because you can't throw stones when you live in a glass house, right? I think that m the majority of the media is owned by corporations. They have corporate sponsors, and a lot of them allow those sponsors to have editorial control. So I don't think you really want to poke at Verizon knowing that you're doing something similar. Right. Now, the corporate parent issue is an important one. But Verizon is literally their sponsors for so many of these sites. And if they're not... And, and much more importantly on television, et cetera. And if they're not a sponsor, they'd like them to be a sponsor because right. Verizon spends an enormous amount of money in media. And so the rest of the media is like, no, 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 we, Verizon, we didn't say anything. What do you? Okay, so that's part of the issue here. But I think Anna's entirely right that the second biggest point here is that the corporate media has, or corporations overall, have dropped pretenses. In the, in the old way of doing things, you, you they would do it in exactly the way that I just explained. I'm going to give you ads, and in return, you be cool, right? And you don't criticize me. In fact, my favorite example is Archer Daniels Midland, who is a, a company that doesn't sell anything to the public. And they would spend millions of dollars every year funding the Sunday talk shows. And you, did, you see a little supported by Archer Daniels Midland at the end, and you're like, what can I buy from them? Nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, the reason was they were paying each of those shows a million dollars a year to, to not talk about them, to not talk about them, right? Because they were getting good, sweet deals from the government and they didn't want that exposed. Right. Okay. So now in this case, what Verizon has done is said, you know what? I'm going to cut out the middleman. 
So I know we used to fund them and la 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 la. Eh, it's getting to be a hassle. Why don't I just set up the website? Yeah. Why don't I just become the media? Who could tell the difference anyway? I mean, GE kind of already did this when they used to own NBC. Mm -hmm. They're a defense contractor, one of the largest defense contractors, among the different things that they do. So they bought a media company, and that media company told us how great war was. So like, why don't we do the same thing? So that's what they're doing here. But there's no part of the company, not, no, 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 it's brazen. We own the whole company, we're pretending to be media, but in reality, it's completely propaganda. We're not going to tell you about it, and we're just going to give you our version of the news. And I think about this a lot. Uh, how can you avoid media getting corrupted by corporate influence or, or government influence or anything like that? And in reality, the only way it works is if it's member-sponsored, if your own viewers actually help fund the show. And that's part of the revenue that we get, honestly. We're, we're very, very loyal to our members for that reason alone. We wouldn't be able to exist without them. So, I mean, that's really the only way that I can think about it where it wouldn't be corrupted. So it is super hard, and believe me, it's an enormous challenge for anybody in media. Uh, but I think there are other models that could uh, prove to be successful. Obviously, Omidyar are giving a quarter of a billion dollars to The Intercept to do independent journalism, oh, well, that's helped tremendously. Now, those are the guys who are going after the government, right? Uh, but you could also have a trust, like The Guardian does, so that they are independent. They have the money that's always going to come in because of that trust, and so they're not beholden uh, as the others are to advertisers. Et so there's a couple of models that might work, but it's not easy. But, I, but one final thing, I like how they called it sugar string. Like, no, no, you know why? It's their sugar daddies, uh -huh. and there are strings attached. So they're ah, like, ah, that's a good way of looking at it. They're like, just screw it. Let's just call it sugar string. Like, it says sugar string that I'm dangling in front of you, and I'm gonna pull it if you don't do what I tell you. Damn. I, it, it's wonderfully brazen. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I mean, I like that they're being transparent. I'm just very curious to see if people reading this publication will understand the tremendous bias that they have. Oh, no, that's the whole point. Of course yeah. they don't. They're not going to see any of this. Yeah. They're just going to see an article on the web somewhere from a website called Sugar String. They're not going to know any of the background, and they're going to think it's real news. It's disastrous. Yeah. All right, moving on to the World Series. The San Francisco Giants won against uh, the Kansas City Royals in the World Series, and you would guess that people in San Francisco would be celebrating, you know, in a polite way, in a nonviolent way, except no, that's not what happened. There were riots, and riot police had to get involved. Pictures show that there were bonfires all over the place, and as a result, uh, officers had to disperse the crowd, which led to quite a bit of violence, okay? So according to the Associated Press, violence left three people injured in separate Separate incidents, two by gunshots and one in a stabbing. The gunshot victims' wounds were non-life-threatening. And um, upon doing more research later, I, I didn't read anything about the person who got stabbed dying. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, you have two people getting shot after a sports team won a game. And the reason why I'm bringing this story up is because I just don't really understand it. Like, what? Why would you do this? Why would you get violent after your team wins? You should celebrate, absolutely. But why are you going to start fires and start shooting people? Yeah, uh, I'm half and half on this. So, on the one hand, I get that you know you're celebrating, you're probably drunk, you want to have a good time. See, pause right there. Go go back to that toilet paper picture, okay, or whatever those are, right? You want to do this to the town? I love it. Okay, you're having a good time. Yeah, it's going to be pain in the ass to clean up. Yeah, there's going to be costs associated with it. But you just won the the World Series. Ha have fun. They climb on the buses. It's a little dangerous, but I get it. That's still kind of fun, and you're still kind of drunk. Don't touch the wires, uh, the, because the buses on, in San Francisco are wired. Just be careful, right? Yeah, I, but, mm -hmm. Go ahead. The, but the half that, I, that drives me crazy, and it's not because I'm Grandpa Jank. It, it drove me crazy when I was a, a kid, too, mm -hmm. right? Why, why are you lighting things on fire? Yeah, exactly. And, and, and you're standing on some dude's car and smashing the fuck out of it, right? Like that guy, right? What how that how guy mad do? are you going to be if that's your car? I right? would be livid. Right? And so now your car's destroyed. That guy is so lucky he didn't die hanging on that wire, okay? Uh, and so I, I, you're, and this guy's doing wheelies. I know he's trying to have fun, but do it in a parking lot. I don't know. Was I too responsible as a kid? I don't know. But do it in a parking lot. We did that in parking lots. But that car is like inches away from peeling out and killing three and a half people. Yeah, there. if I'm living in San Francisco, I don't want to walk through that, right? That's not a safe environment. Someone can really get hurt. I mean, just look at that. 
why does there need to be chaos? And it's, it's not, you know, something that's an isolated incident, obviously. It's not something that's only unique to San Francisco fans. It's, it happens with all sports and all types of games. And I just don't get it. Maybe it's because I'm not a sports fanatic, but just calm down. I get that you've been drinking, right? I like the <laughs> idea of Anna walking into the middle of that crowd. Everybody be cool now, all right? Everybody <laughs> calm down. I need you to stop that party attitude, okay, and get undrunk right now and bring it down. Uh -huh. But it, look, maybe some people find this grumpy, et cetera. But look, when, when people do this because they're worried about civil rights issues, they're thugs, they're, they're this, they're that, right? But yet, and this is multicultural. I mean, from what I can see from the pictures, white people, Latino people, et cetera, right? Yeah. Um, but, like, but we take this as a, of course, well, that's what happens. Well, obviously, if you win something, you should go destroy the whole town. It's I don't know why that's an of course. And I, maybe it's my fault that I don't understand the joy of lighting things on fire. <laughs> Okay, no, so are we being grumpy dicks? Or, I don't, I, don't, I mean, if, what, what you, let's if take anyone to the jury votes here. yes, I just don't understand you. Well, that's why I would love an explanation. Yeah, tell me. Go ahead, Jim. I, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't know how, it's not, I don't think, as much as we talk about how police have been, been inciting violence before, it doesn't seem like they come up and say, hey, you, stop yelling, stop saying go Giants. Like, so I don't know where it begins, but at one, some point, people get angry. Maybe there was a random Royals fan wandering around and they said, kick his ass! I don't know, you know? Something went from like, yeah, to fuck, let's do something bad. Like, I don't, I don't know, there's a switch. And I think it must be different in every scenario, but it can't be that different because it happens from hockey games to soccer matches to Canada to Brazil. It does not matter in what part of the world you're in. Somehow this always happens. It does, and like I guess the reason why I don't understand it is because there are several things that I'm a fanatic of, right? Things that I absolutely love. So like, let's say there was like a hot Latino man competition, okay. and my favorite, yeah. my favorite Latino man won. Oh, yeah. that sounds great. I'm yeah. not gonna be like, Whoa! I'm not gonna go now. You're not gonna be like, all right, fuck it, so, somebody, somebody get me a car. I'm gonna fucking burn it down. I just, I don't get it. But anyway, okay. yeah. Okay, so um, <laughs> I think what we're missing is the mob mentality, mm -hmm. right? That once you're in a mob, that it becomes a different entity, mm -hmm. and the people within it become different. And so uh, that I have experienced a little bit, right? And, and it's a scary thing, man. When a mob goes out of control, and, yeah. and you know why? It's in our DNA. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I don't know what it is. Like maybe because we're all in, and I hate to use this in reference to this, but like we're a pack too. You know, yeah. like the wolves are a pack, and, and humans are a pack. So like when we're, we're in a war, we're in a hostile situation, whatever it is, right? And there's a bunch of dudes somewhere, mm -hmm. and it's a c magic number. I don't know if it's 15. I don't know if it's 150. I don't know what it is, but th some switch goes off and goes destroy. Have you ever felt like you were part of a one-man wolf pack, and then all of a sudden you had a bunch of really cool people join you? <laughs> and they completed your wolf pack. <laughs> I should I should do that speech one day. <laughs> okay, all right. One last thing. Um, who doesn't hate the Giants? Okay. I heard that I'm an Angelino and I'm supposed to hate them, but it's no. funny. Yeah. I was I was rooting for the Giants because I'm like, yay, California! <laughs> and then they're like, no, no, no. As an Angelino. <laughs> You're such a dork. Yay, California. Okay, anyway, no, I don't give a shit about the Dodgers or being an Angelino. I've never called myself an Angelino in my life. Well, you are lame. one. Okay, anyway, <laughs> hey, I'm an Angelino. Okay. Um, so, no, it's, they're the fucking, they're the, they're, Big team, they're the overdog, overdog. Underdogs. No, no, not underdogs. They're the favorite. All right. There's no such thing. The as Royals that. are the underdogs, aren't yes. they? Yeah. Everybody wanted the Royals. The Royals never get the fucking win. They like they're in a town of 37 Aww, people. They never get to win. I know. Well, how liberal of me, right? <laughs> right? Like they got, they have 12 dollars to spend on the team, right? And they were right there. They were right there. They almost won, and then fucking the giant. Giants win well, again. Well, they have won three times in the last five years. I know. It's super boring. Right? You guys like that info okay. that I just tossed out there? I know. I know. You're unbearable. <laughs> she is so proud every time she knows some tiny little fact. right? <laughs> About sports. <laughs> About sports. About sports. Definitely. All right. All right. Forward. Uh, the next story is a serious one. I actually want to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to discuss uh, some protests that are taking place in Iran over acid attacks on women. You liked that, didn't you? 
Well, if you like that, you'll love the whole show. TYTnetwork.com. Get the whole show as a member.